So today is going to be very um, interesting because uh, I'll be uh, comparing two breeds and these two breeds are very close to me because uh, my cats are of these two breeds and I'm talking about British and Scottish cats. Okay, so British cats uh, will in, uh, include the British short hair and British long hair. While for the Scottish cats, uh, I'll be uh, discussing the Scottish fold, the Scottish straight, and also the long-haired versions, uh, Highland Fold and Highland Straight. And uh, if you've seen pictures of uh, British and Scottish, sometimes you would be, uh, these two are different when they mostly look the same. So in today's episode, I'm going to guide you as to how different are the two breeds. Okay, so this is Sir Nikolai and we're going to learn something new today. So one of the most impo important things to uh, discuss about the Scottish and the British breed is that uh, they are actually closely connected um, because, of, uh, because of the breeding process that uh, went through them. Okay, so I will be discussing first the British cats and you guys will see to, my, uh, to this side, <laughs> to my left, uh, you're going to see some uh, pictures of, uh, of my cat, uh, my British cats. And uh, so I'll be playing a video of uh, British short hair and British long hair cats so that uh, if uh, just in case you would want to get a British and long hair cats, those are what the breed uh, would look like. Okay, so for today, I'm going to give you a lot of uh, trivia and also uh, facts about the British uh, cats, British long hair and British short hair so that uh, you would know uh, if the British uh, breed is actually for you. Okay. So let's start first with the British short hair cats. Okay, so the British short hair cats are very cute because uh, they almost look like teddy bear. So what is so good about them is that they have chunky uh, body. Sometimes they call them chunky. They have short, strong legs also. And then uh, their tails are long with a rounded uh, uh, tip. Uh, they have very large heads, um, round short, um, you know, a thick neck. And then uh, their ears are, uh, you know, going to be rounded at the tip. They have very large eyes uh, usually. And uh, their coat color is so special because there's just so many uh, variety for, uh, for you to choose from. So this uh, stocky cat is uh, actually very lovable. And uh, uh, maybe um, if you are into this kind of a look for a cat, you might uh, want to get uh, the British short hair. So... Let's talk about maybe a, b a bit about the history of uh, the British short hair cats. Um, it's definitely one of the oldest breeds in uh, in uh, in different uh, cat association, and it's the most popular cat, obviously, in the UK where the British uh, short hair comes from. Okay, and um, the British uh, actually um, uh, the British short hair was uh, formally um, included in the different uh, categories of. Uh, you know, of uh, the breed in uh, different cat associations, actually just in the late 1970s. Uh, because the British uh, short hair has, uh, uh, has been uh, evolved and bred from different types of cats. So um, the most common of the British uh, short hair cats are called British Blues. So these are the cats that are gray or dark gray in, uh, in color because uh, in cat colors, blue actually mean dark gray. And um, during uh, the World War, when the British uh, short hair uh, or the British blue breed was actually in danger, so what uh, some of the cat owners did was that they mixed actually the British blue uh, with Persian and also with Russian blue uh, cats. So this process of uh, actually breeding you know, with other breeds is very interesting because uh, when people talk about uh, uh, breeds, they always say, is that, uh, you know, is that cat a pure breed or something? But you guys have to understand that for a breed to be created, um, a lot of times it's, uh, you know, it's being mixed with other breeds. So this is the reason why the British short hair actually has some similar look with the Persian cats and also the Russian blue cats because uh, for the British a short hair cat to, be, uh, to achieve that final look, so there were generations of breeding 
with Persian cat and also with the Russian blue. Until we have now, you know, the acceptable form of the British uh, short hair. Okay? So, therefore, uh, when it comes to the British short hair, so you would see that, uh, you know, the different uh, dimensions, like uh, how their, uh, you know, their body should look like, very chunky, you know, and uh, those uh, very large head, etc. They are, uh, you know, a result of the breeding. Okay? So, if you're going to get a British short hair cat, uh, these are the things that you have to know. Uh, the breed usually is uh, going, uh, the average lifespan of the breed is usually around 15 to 20 years. And then the males can actually weigh up to 4 to 8 kilograms, while the females can actually weigh uh, from 3 to 6 kilograms. Okay, so those are uh, the facts actually for the British short hair. Um, and at this point, I'll be talking about uh, the different personality and temperament of uh, the British, uh, British short hair. So number one is that uh, British short hair tend to be very affectionate. So very affectionate, very friendly, they're laid back, easygoing, adaptable, and they're very gentle pets, you know, very lo loyal. The thing though is that... Um, while they're very affectionate, um, the British short hair cats and long hair variety, they don't really like to be picked up. A lot of times, uh, you would just have to let the British short hair go to you. And uh, this is why uh, you know, the British short hair is a bit strange because they can be affectionate, but they would rather be left alone sometimes. Okay? But generally, uh, they're very good with children and with other pets, and the British uh, short hair is... Uh, Really just uh, very friendly in general. Okay, when it comes to grooming, you don't really need to groom them often because uh, uh, the British short hair is, uh, especially the short hair variety, you can just comb their hair uh, once a week and it will be fine. But if you get British long hair, so that is when it gets uh, very tricky because uh, you have to be combing uh, the long hair if uh, you get the British long hair. Okay, um... Another odd thing about uh, the British short hair, by the way, is that this breed is very, very slow in maturing. In fact, it takes three years uh, for the full maturity of uh, what they should look like. So, a very interesting uh, you know, tidbit about uh, British short hair. And so, um, since they're also very, uh, very thick, and that's the reason why also they're very prone to obesity. So be careful uh, with uh, you know with overfeeding uh, British uh, cats because they tend to uh, be too fat. Okay, so those are actually the facts about the British short hair, and uh, a lot of the things I mentioned are also true with the British uh, long hair. So the only difference is that uh, the long hair variety I think uh, would have more of the Persian um, outcross breed breeding that happened in the you know. Uh, along the way when they were finalizing the look of the British uh, short hair. But generally speaking, temperament-wise, uh, personality-wise, the British short hair and the long hair are very, very similar. Okay? So that's the British uh, short hair, uh, British cats uh, variety. And so, uh, for the next part, we're going to be looking at the Scottish Fold. And for the Scottish Fold, uh, I'm going to show you uh, videos of uh, my uh, cats uh, and uh, you're going to be seeing here that I'm going to put together already the the short-haired uh, Scottish fold and long-haired Scottish fold so the only difference to be honest is really just uh, you know um, those uh, Scottish folds with long hair called Highland folds and then if uh, you know they have short hair then just simply Scottish fold um, and then if uh, the Scottish cat does not have folded ears, so we call that the Scottish straight. Same way we have what we call the Highland straights. Okay, so let me read uh, a few things about uh, the Scottish fold right now. So when it comes to the physical look of a Scottish fold, um, they look very similar to the British. They have round head also. They have a uh, you know, very firm chin and a jaw. Uh, round whisker pads and then short neck, um, very wide eyes as well. So to be honest, the real clear difference is really the ears. So when you look at the ears, the ears are folded, the forward, downwards also. And uh, when it comes to the body, maybe the body of the short uh, of uh, the Scottish is not as heavy and rounded like the British. 
uh, but uh, they're more of a medium cat. In fact, uh, when we look at the average weight between uh, the British and Scottish, the British uh, tend to be heavier, okay? Because uh, the Scottish uh, cats uh, tend to be about a kilogram or two lighter than uh, the British uh, cats, okay? So that makes them uh, definitely somehow smaller um, uh, or lighter than uh, British cats, okay? Now, when it comes to some history um, about the breed of the Scottish, you will be surprised that all Scottish folds actually come from a single cat. Like literally, there was one cat who uh, had uh, that genetic uh, mutation in her ears, and this cat's name is Susie. So Susie uh, was a cat in Scotland, and very interestingly, uh, you know, in 1960s, 1961, uh, the owners, uh, William and Mary Ross, has uh, Susie, and then uh, you know they wanted to actually replicate the the uh, the strange fold um, you know of uh, Susie's ears, and that's when uh, you know they started experimenting with the breeding. Okay, and this is where the connection between Scottish and uh, British cats will actually come because um, what happened was that in Scotland they got some British cats to uh, you know to uh, to mate with those uh, folded ear cats okay because technically speaking there was no such real thing as a scottish fold before susie so what they got was uh, a lot of british uh, cats and then uh, they started um, mating or breeding the scottish uh, cats with uh, straight ears and fold ears okay now here's the problem with uh, when it comes to the breeding thing they found out that if they mate a fold ear cat with another fold ear cat, the results were very deadly in the sense that sometimes uh, half of the litter of kittens would die if not having very severe kind of uh, sicknesses. So like, uh, for example, the bones are not that uh, strong. Uh, there are also limb problems sometimes and it uh, was ruled out as unethical. That's why when you start reading about Scottish fold cats, there are actually some people who are still actually fighting uh, up to today whether breeding Scottish uh, folds are, can be considered ethical. Okay? And this is the reason why when it comes to breeding Scottish folds, it's very, very, very tricky. So the only acceptable way is for you to breed a Scottish fold and a Scottish straight. And that will uh, you know, uh, produce a litter where half of the kittens will be fold half of the kitten's ears uh, will be straight, okay? And uh, this is something that you find after 21 days. So within three weeks, um, the cats uh, that come from uh, you know, a pairing of fold and straight will actually, the ears will start either folding or just re retaining straight, okay? So that's uh, usually what happens. And this is also the reason why when it comes to breeding the Scottish cats, you will uh, realize that many would not actually follow the Scottish fold and Scottish straight pairing, but rather would actually do what the original breeders did. And that is to outcross British and Scottish so that the kittens are healthier. And this is the reason why that's what I'm doing. Okay? Because I want actually healthier kittens. That's why I still, you know, would breed uh, my Scottish cats, uh, Scottish folds with my British males because that is the recommended thing from the different breeders around the world. In fact, uh, if you look at uh, CFA so, uh, and also TICA, so these are the different uh, cat associations that actually would recommend that uh, this is the best thing to do, would be um, you know, uh, the Scottish fold can be a product of an outcross between a Scottish and British short hair or long hair, or a Scottish and an American short hair. So those are acceptable uh, outcrosses. So to make uh, Scottish cats, so that's actually what, uh, you know, uh, what you can do. Okay, but let's talk about right now the personality of uh, the Scottish fold cats so, so that you can ask, you know, how different are they from the British uh, short hair? Now, this is uh, something that I also would agree with because I, I've lived with uh, Scottish fold cats uh, for about two years now. I definitely think that uh, they're more affectionate. 
So between Scottish and British, um, you know, Scottish, my Scottish tend to be uh, more malambing. They're the ones who would go to me, very playful also, and actually more intelligent. Like I would see my cats actually tend to get more food. They would use their uh, paws in order to get the food for themselves. So they're actually smarter than uh, British short hair cats. Um, and this one, I, I haven't really um, seen it, uh, but it says that uh, the Scottish actually would enjoy outdoors more than the British. And the thing about Scottish is that since they're very sweet, they don't really like to be alone. So for Scottish cats, they prefer to be in the company of another cat or maybe another pet. And sometimes they can also sit like a, you know the Buddha sitting position. So sometimes you, uh, I would find uh, uh, my Scottish cat, uh, um, Fifi and Lily, you know, at the corner and sitting like uh, the Buddha. That's actually very interesting, but uh, you know, that happens. Okay. Um, when it comes to the length of years, um, I think, uh, yeah, from my research, Scottish can live up to around 15 years. So it's almost the same as the British cats. But um, when it comes to the health conditions, obviously the British short hair uh, have less tendencies of uh, health problems. Uh, but if the Scottish fold that you got is actually from uh, you know a mixing of Scottish and British, they tend to be healthier. So therefore, less uh, health problems. Okay. So therefore, um, I don't know if uh, you were able to make a decision right now between the two, but uh, maybe for me, um, at least as a breeder and uh, as an owner of both Scottish and British, uh, these are the things that stand out for me. Okay, um, I would suggest that you get a British cat if you want to actually have uh, you know a healthy cat that uh, you know that's a uh, playful and loyal without being too malambing or too sweet. So if you don't want a cat who always goes to you, you know, would want to carry. Uh, you know, to be carried, get a British cat because they tend to be somehow a bit more aloof than the Scottish. Okay, but if you prefer the opposite, if you want an extremely sweet cat, then get the Scottish. Okay, and also smarter cat, then get the Scottish also because a, a Scottish would, uh, you know, um, tend to actually have a very, uh, you know, very much smarter in some ways. So I would recommend that. Uh, Health-wise, I would uh, say they're roughly the same. Okay, if you want heavier cats, Scot um, British it tends to be heavier um, than Scottish. But if you want a lighter cat, um, Scottish is okay. And uh, maybe one final thing is that if you want to be a breeder and you want to actually have a simpler kind of breeding setup, I would really suggest just go with uh, with British because British uh, breeding is super simple you have british short hair and long hair you can mix them up and it's no problem the problem with scottish breeding is uh you know the danger again of uh, health problems that can come from scottish pair of breeding either fold or straight and worse fold and fold so those are uh can be a bit uh tricky okay and also yeah there's that the thing that you have to explain to some people that you know scottish and british can uh can actually be bred together and still the result is Scottish okay so that's the only way that you can get a Scottish cat if uh, you have a Scottish cat parent and either a Scottish or a British or American short hair then you get a Scottish cat okay so therefore if you want to be a cat breeder um, you don't want to have the hassle that I have you might want just to get British okay and also by the way British um, generally sells higher in the Philippines at least uh, then uh, the Scottish fold, so you might want to get British if you want to be a breeder in the Philippines. Okay, but if you want just a smart pet, Scottish is also pretty great. Okay, okay, so those are the basic differences, and I hope that this video clarified uh, some confusions and also you know made uh, you understand why the two breeds are usually put uh, together. Okay, so this is Sir Nikolai. Thank you so much uh, for uh, watching this episode. I'll see you guys soon.